Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the No Laying Up Golf Podcast. This is a women's golf check-in. My name is Randy. I'm joined by two associates today. Mr. Cody McBride, how are you this afternoon? Big, excited to be here, chopping it up about some women's golf, buddy. Tour is finally back in the States. As, I know. as awesome as Asian Swing was, I'm excited to, to get some good consistency, some solid regular viewing hours for us. I'm jacked, buddy. Well, good, good. Also joining us, Mr. Tron Carter, TC. What's going on today, my man? Hey, big. Uh, we got the Epson tour in town here in Jack's. I totally, yeah, I, I kind of forgot about that. And it's up the street at Atlantic Beach Country Club this week. Going to try to get up there on Saturday, uh, bring the kiddos out for a couple hours of that. But yeah, we got three banger events upcoming on the LPGA schedule. So stoked to check in after the asian swing it seems like they were gone for like the all of q1 basically <laughs> i know yeah. i know it's like they've just been over there doing things but uh <laughs> we're, we're we're gonna get lpga back on much more of a regular cadence we'll get into the schedule before we do so cody let's thank our proud proud presenting sponsor our good friends at yeti so excited biggie Thank you uh, for that great introduction. And of course, thank you, big thank you to our title sponsor of the LPJ events all year long. That's Yeti. They've been with us for a couple of years now. It doesn't matter if it's luggage, hard coolers, soft coolers, drinkware, you name it. Yeti products perform when it matters most. I love that blue color. I love their clear new bottles. Awesome logo there too. Yeah, under NIP. bottle. Ah, they're so sweet. Everybody head over to Yeti.com for their complete line of products and more yeti made to get lost i don't tell people to get lost a lot but yeti's new slogan made to get lost gear for wherever you find yourself check them out yeti.com cody when was the last time you were lost a uh, long long time but this is all like aided due to navigation and like gps and everything else like that but there has been a couple times where i was you know in my travels truly like oh shit man like we we out here uh i don't know where we're at but it usually doesn't take long. You know, you find key terrain features, everything. You, you'll triangulate yourself and, and figure out where you're at pretty quick. What about you, Big? Oh, it's been it's been a minute. You know, I'm I'm old enough. When I first started driving, the the cell phone, the GPS was not a thing. I, I'm trying to remember. Andy was printing out MapQuest. What? I literally. I did. I know. When I, when I went to college, I drove from uh, drove from Montana to Arizona, and I remember before I left, I went to the the gas station and bought one of the jumbo atlases. So, and then yeah. the entire drive, which is just like down I fifteen basically the entire way, but I would flip pages from state to state. Yeah. I, I remember pulling into gas stations to ask for local directions. I remember, you know, pulling up. You, you see a man or a lady walking down the street. You, you ask them for directions. We we don't have, we don't get that anymore, TC. And I would I would venture to say I think we're all a little worse for it. I agree. I think one of my favorite things of going on a trip back in the day was you would go to you know my dad was always a big big Hertz guy, just like my uncle Juice. You would always go to a uh, you always go to the rental counter and they would give you a map and they would highlight out all right like where are you headed and they would highlight yep. the route out for you basically. Like, what a what a what a delightful kind of lost art that was yeah the little trip tick triple a would provide that um god you said something else that jogged my oh back when i was doing some college visits i'll, I'll never forget we were up in uh the boston area and driving downtown boston with my dad my mom my poor mom riding shotgun trying to navigate the insane city grid or lack of grid that is boston my dad getting so frustrated god those were good times i i feel like we need we need like retro we should have a month where it's like nobody's allowed to use the gps on their phone like let's go back to the old days well at&t tried to do that to us a couple weeks ago <laughs> I, what happened? What do you mean? They just froze. You don't remember this? Like no. all AT and T service was down for like eighteen hours. No. Speak, speak for yourself. Mine was up. Uh, yeah, I don't. I, I didn't notice a lack of. Huh. Anyway, I, this probably has nothing to do with women's golf. Uh, we we can get this show back on the road. We do have another sponsor. Before we dive into our agenda, I want to thank Titleist. This show is also brought to you by Titleist. 
the number one ball in golf and the number one ball in the LPGA Tour. Guys, it's no secret the best players in the world are incredibly dialed in to their equipment, and that starts with the golf ball. Last season, 77% of all golf balls played on the LPGA Tour were either a Pro V1 or Pro V1X. For those that don't know, Pro V1, they have a mid-flight trajectory, a bit lower spin in the long game, and a softer feel compared to the Pro V1X. The X flies higher, spins more in the long game, and has a slightly firmer feel. I, because of those spin profiles mainly, I'm in the Pro V1X. Cody, what are you in? Are you in the X or are you a Pro V1 guy? X boy. You're an X. TC, I got to think you're a Pro V1 guy. Is that correct? I'm V. Yeah, Pro V1. Okay. I, just, I don't. I simply don't need any more spin. Well, well, let me ask you about two LPGA players. So Lilia Vu, what would you guys guess? Is, is she a Pro V1X or a Pro V1? Mm. Uh, good question. I would say she's probably the V. She's an X. Really? Yeah. And Allison Corpus. How about how about her? I'd say she's a Pro V1. She yeah, is. V. Yeah, she's okay. a V. Good job. Allison, of course, grew up in Hawaii, learned to play the game, seeing that lower, more penetrating trajectory, which she gets with the Pro V1, while still getting all the short game spin that she needs. Her favorite shot, the one stop and hopper around the green. And then for Lilia. She Her preference is increased spin and the height of the Pro V1X. She's great at controlling spin, flighting the ball down when needed, but loves to take advantage of that higher flight when attacking firm greens. She just loves control in her short game. So folks listening, the best players in the world will tell you the importance of having a golf ball that is fit to your game, and you can do the same thing. Head over to Titleist.com to start the fitting process and find out which Titleist golf ball is right for your game. Thank you very much to Titleist. And boys, you, you mentioned it. We, uh, we, we've, we've been watching the ladies over in Asia. I will say some wonderful primetime viewing windows out here in Denver. I, I will be sad to see those go. Maybe, maybe let's, let's, let's just chat a, a, a briefly about what, what has been, what's behind us. I want to go back to the, the last episode we had was at the beginning of the Asian swing. And so we have not talked about, I think, a big story in the women's game. Patty Tavataniket, of course, she had a dominating win in Saudi on the LET. And then she backed it up going back to back uh, with a win in Thailand. Cody, let me throw it to you. It, it's just great. I mean, I, I don't even know what else to say. We're, we're huge Patty T fans. D does her resurgence, does her play... Does her winning twice already, it, it, how much of a surprise is this to you? Yeah, big surprise there, big. I would say that uh, didn't see the Saudi win coming, I would say, just based off results. But we know, and she talked a lot about it coming out of that week in preparation from going or to go into uh, Thailand of how much work that she was putting in and that she was absolutely grinding on her game, that she had made a couple changes, that everything was kind of, finally getting back into place her ball striker was running turning back into form and she was finally seeing the ball go in the hole which has been the struggle for her and as soon as it seems like she got confidence back with her putter that i mean the door just completely opened wide up she had you know shot 67 67 66 67 to win by one in thailand over alba in venezuela and honestly it was like kind of stress-free watching it yeah what a, I mean, I guess, first of all, what a hell of a final round by Albain to to put the pressure on Patty. But Patty, par five, birdie the 18th to win. TC, I know that's got to warm your heart. A, a, a Thai national winning the, the Thai championship. I mean, that as, as a big national open guy, I know it's not technically the, the Thailand open. It's the Honda LPGA Thailand. But I feel like it's close enough. Yeah, it seems like the, the you know, kind of... Uh poster event for them over there uh in thailand so yeah that's fantastic i think the seems like the lpga is on a good run of winners this you know starting off this year too. so good TC. It's, it's kind of the opposite of the pga tour start to the season of of you know the stars need to play better on the pga tour the stars are playing great on the lpga tour and that that certainly bodes well i know we've talked about it a lot here in episodes past about maybe a parody problem of sorts 
on the LPGA. And I think there's, you know, if, if the stars are playing better and more consistently, I think there's probably, uh, you know, that, that, that bodes well for everybody that bodes well for ratings, that bodes well for new fans, that bodes well for building stars, all of that. So, uh, somebody that I wanted to shout out big, you know, it's not on the agenda, but Ayaka Furuway. Yeah. Uh, she's, she's got four top tens in five events this year and uh didn't play well like kind of lived limped home in singapore still finished top 10 there shot 75 in the final round but uh like she's number two in the season standings thus far ahead of patty t uh now granted patty t won in in saudi arabia as well that's on the the let side of things but for away i think is is you know i feel like everybody's talking about lydia and patty and nelly and for is right there with them i mean it's it's been ultra impressive for sure for sure Uh, like you said four top tens five starts i think the bugaboo for her a little bit is just closing the deal which as you said a little bit evidenced by that final round 75 in singapore singapore was the week after thailand we'll we'll just go right to singapore guys i i i mean I, i think when we get to the end of the season we still might look back on this Singapore event as if, if not the best kind of Sunday of the LPGA season, it, it's certainly going to be in the conversation. You had Hannah green and Celine Boutier dueling down the stretch. Ultimately Hannah green birdieing the 16th, the 17th and the 18th to clip Celine by one shot, just a hell of a performance and, and really a, a hell of a golf tournament. Cody, the, the more we've talked to folks, I I was talking to Sophie Walker. I'm sure you traded some notes with her as well. But it seems like Singapore is the crown jewel of the Asian swing, certainly the early Asian swing on the LPGA Tour. Yeah, I think it's the course adds a lot to that. They play the number one course in Singapore uh, in a, a country that is extremely, uh, I would say, overpopulated. Their golf courses right now, I don't know if you guys have dug into this, at all but they're not like owned outright they're leased from the government and what's happening is because their population is becoming uh so large that as these leases for the golf courses come up they're not actually being re-signed and they're being turned into like housing developments because that the need for housing is that great right now so i think it's the golf course i think it's the fact that hsbc is the title sponsor and kind of the weight that that carries across asia and ultimately it's the purse in the field that this that this tournament brings with it and you see that by hannah green i think that's a perfect winner her closing this out her back nine was very reminiscent of her when she won last year at wilshire and she just kind of you know ran up and there was no really you know no really faults in her game she just kind of went out and took it and it was it was awesome to see i think hannah green tc what did... Does Hannah Green do anything for you? I, I I think she's in an interesting spot in the in the LPGA ecosystem where she's won a major back in 2019. She won the KPMG Women's PGA Championship at Hazeltine, um, and the win in Singapore was her fourth win on tour. Now, I, I mean, is, is she somebody in your opinion that? <laughs> Is, is she a major threat? Does she deserve to be mentioned in that upper echelon? Uh, talk to me about your feelings relative Hannah Green. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of one of those things. She's 27. She's not. I'm trying to think who the comp would be on the men's side of, you know, took down a major, but she's not really winning consistently enough to, you know, and she's won a good at, at good courses too. But, you know, like, made two out of the five cuts last year in the majors you know hasn't really done a whole lot outside of that win in the majors so it's tricky like she's you know i I tend to like australian golfers she's from perth um you know they tend to kind of play proper golf but yeah it's i'm I'm struggling to find a comp of somebody on the men's side who's, who's taken down a major but is kind of a little bit more advanced in their career and and there's just not a whole lot of ceiling left there yeah, as, as you're saying that, I'm I'm racking my brain trying to think who who would fit that profile. You know, it's funny. I talking to Hannah Green. I think this was, gosh, it was more than a year ago. But I know she's really put an emphasis on trying to 
acquire distance, to acquire speed in her golf swing. And for, for a while there, I was a little dubious whether that was helping her. But now with the win last year at Welshire, like you guys said, really strong Sunday final round in Singapore to win again. Maybe it is helping. I, I, I'm not sure. You know, I look at her KPMG Insights profile page and... <laughs> again take these a little bit with the with the grain of salt just because it's you know players and caddies self-reporting some stuff but strokes gain driving is really one of the weaknesses of her game and so I'm, I'm i'm just wondering in terms of you know any added speed and and length off the tee it's it's not really showing up in her statistical profile right now but her approach play this year has been phenomenal she's gaining over a shot uh, on approach and she's putting the ball really well too, gaining almost a, a, a stroke per round there. So I don't know. Yeah. Bit, bit of an interesting one. I think she's, she's got some parallels to, uh, Leona McGuire. Mm. You know, if you kind of strip away the, yeah. the, the Solheim cup aura from Leona, you know, obviously Australians don't play in the Solheim cup. So it's, you know, kind of similar, like I think Leona's 28 or 29, similar profile as far as wins and you know obviously leona doesn't have uh, a major championship to her her credit but you know it, it just seems like maybe not the longest players they're you know really really good approach play and and yeah that's that's probably the closest comp i can come up with i will say she she works with you know she works with aaron and zoot and she does put a ton of time into her fitness and i know that that finding speed was a huge emphasis and even though the stats don't necessarily show that i also will say i think leona is the best comp tc that you possibly could make and i'll i'll say you know they don't get an opportunity to play in the solheim cup but we saw that at the international crown and i think every single other not just team event but kind of how the aussies on the lpga tour kind of surround and, and and move about the tour they they're a very close group of people and hannah is like at the center of that like she is the the mesh that keeps, mm -hmm. you know, the the girls from Melbourne and the the rest from Perth. And then you have, you know, Steph that's down from Sydney. Like she's the one that kind of keeps it all together. And and her relationship with Minji is like kind of what opens Minji up. Uh, you know, Hannah was recently, you know, she got married this offseason. I think that's an awesome step in her life, especially somebody that's kind of coming and, and seeing that later on. She wanted to live her life and travel the world and focus on her craft and now getting married and kind of moving into a different chapter. And obviously the drive is still there. It's not going to be like top five in the world. Um, she's a, she's a solid, she's a solid top 15, top 15 in the world player. Here's the comp on the men's side. Shane Lowry. It's a good one. Has, has a major doesn't, you know, hasn't won prolifically. He's 36 years old. It's kind of a similar point in his career. I think length has never been, you know, he's he's great approach player. I don't think length is necessarily his his you know calling card. I don't know. And, and you're never shocked if like he's yeah. on the first page of a big tournament. You know, it's like, ah, Shane Lowry. Yeah, he, you know, he's he's got game. I, I like that. I, I I was gonna throw out Keegan Bradley just you know, setting aside oh, I think that's, Keegan's that's won a whatever lot your more, though. whatever your personal yeah. feelings are, yeah. yeah. And that isn't a thing on Keegan at all. I think you know Keegan wins a lot more than people give him credit for. It's uh, long as shit, <laughs> you know. It, and honestly, his career he stretched this thing out, and, and yeah. the fact that Keegan had his number one tool taken away from him is is pretty incredible to see, like where he's at now. Um, and I think the wins speak there for himself. The other thing about Shane too. I think like, you know, Shane and, and Rory, I, I do not envy them because they carry like a, a very proud golfing nations, like the weight and the pressure of that on their shoulders. And, you know, I think there's, you know, Hannah and definitely Minji and, you know, the rest of them from Australia definitely feel that too. It's phenomenal. Well, the, the, the final event that, you know, since since we've last checked in, the final event that occurred was uh, they finally got back to China the Blue what Bay about China, Randy? LPGA. Uh, they they had not played this event since I believe twenty. It was either twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen. Of course, COVID and 
you know, God knows what else. But uh, finally got back to China. And guys, genuinely, let me just say, I, I am <laughs> thrilled that Bailey Tardy, uh, really a dominant performance. I mean, a Sunday 65 to win by four shots. She shot 66 on Saturday. So going 66, 65 to win her first LPGA uh, event of her career. Hell of a performance there. Of course, going back to last year's U.S. Women's Open, I, I had poked fun a little bit at Bailey. She she jumped out to an early lead, and I quite confidently and I think correctly said, I'm not sure we really need to worry about Bailey. But guys, I guess the question is, you know, I don't think that that's not where the vitriol came from, Vic. I think you're, uh, you know, that, that might be. Well, you, I think you got pretty personal with you're taking shots at her dog. You're taking shots at, at, at a lot no, of things no. outside. Apologize of Everybody knows dog. Randy doesn't like canines. And, and I will say very sadly, that dog has since passed. But I was apologizing you're, to you're the You're a dog, bad guy, Randy. No, 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 no. I was apologizing to everybody. I, I did not I did not bring those people into it initially. Uh, I do have a tape that I'd like to roll here, though, just to, to kind of round out. The, I'm just kidding. Uh, so later on in life, congratulations to Bailey Tardy. Of course, dominant performance, just like Big said. She ran away with this thing. It was awesome to see, like, even when she was, you know, three, four strokes ahead, the fact of how she finished on her back nine of, like, just pouring everything in is phenomenal stuff. I was going to say, her 65, Cody, like, she she started off with seven pars in a row, and at that point, you're kind of like, Oh, What's here up? we go again, kind of yep. thing. And then and then she eagles eight, birdies nine, and makes five birdies on the back nine to to seal the deal. So for people wondering it. if if Randy ever did apologize to Bailey, he did. Uh we in we, person. We That's talked about that. I am. There was an in person apology that was done last year at Walton Heath at the, the women's open. And I think, you know, everything was mended. They they we separated in a great spot. I don't know if Bailey actually remembers that apology, but I know we do. And if anybody ever needs it, I have videotape evidence to prove it. Well, let's talk about Bailey Tardy because she is somebody that, by and large, you know, people that that we know and have spoken to. I mean, th th this is not a fluke win in the sense that like Bailey Tardy has a ton, a ton of talent. She's got a ton of game. For whatever reason, you know, I, I think lack of maybe focus, quite honestly, being one of those, it, it just hasn't clicked to this point in, in her professional career. But we really could be seeing a bit of a shift. She's 27 years old. I guess my question to you guys, TC, I'll start with you. Do you hope, do you think, are we in for a big Bailey Tardy season perhaps? What, what do you think this portends the rest of the year? Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, It seems like her hallmark, she's got a little bit of inconsistency in her game. So we'll see if it's kind of, you know, volatile, uh, how it pops up. Because, like, granted, this was her her only her second start of the year. I don't even think she got into the the first few she didn't. You know, uh, uh, Asian swing events. She missed the cut down in Orlando at the – or, uh, sorry, in uh, – what was that, Bradenton or Sarasota for the – yeah, drive on championship Great, yeah, in January, yeah. you know, shot 74, 74 there. So, yeah, I don't know. I I have a tough time kind of pinning her down, but it's it's kind of one of those things where that sort of player, once once that sort of player has a place to play and a card locked up and can kind of free roll it a little bit, I think that's really going to, you know, I, I would not be shocked to see her win once maybe even twice more because she's got that weight off of her shoulders of like she was a rookie last year she knows how to you know she knows where she's playing not only the rest of this year but also next year as well having a window under her belt now so yeah and and you know it seems like her her game is very much like you know hey i'm gonna like i'm gonna hit the shit out of it tita green <laughs> yes like yes. like like i'm an i'm an elite like like i have a different skill set than 98% of the women out here. So uh, I'm going to use that to my advantage. So, you know, I mean, shit, if, if we see her put it all together consistently, it could be, you know, the start of something great. Cody, just real quick, uh, Bailey, her, her bugaboo, I mean, again, going into the KPMG Insights uh, page, last year, her, her putting and her short game were, were not good, not nearly good enough. That's, that's self-reported. Bad. Like, so it might be even worse. <laughs> I know. 
I know to the to the tune of you know she was losing almost a, a stroke per round on the greens, which ranked 239th uh, on on the LPGA tour, but it, it's her ball striking. And and this year, you know, very small sample, but TC, you're right. Like her putting has essentially been neutral, minus point zero seven strokes gained per round. And her ball striking has just been phenomenal. So I, I'm excited. Cody, my question, you know, with this win, she all of a sudden vaults into a, a very serious candidate to perhaps grab a Solheim Cup spot. You know, we got to remember this is a Solheim Cup year. Is is it, I mean, is that going too far? What are your expectations for Bailey? Uh, I would like to see her continue the momentum. She's an awesome, awesome person, awesome hang, and like truly puts a smile on your face every time you get to talk to her. Uh, but she did, she needs to be consistent. Like she, she struggles with her short game. Uh, and it's so weird because TC, I think we've talked about this a lot. Like she grew up in Atlanta. She's an Atlanta girl. Like, yeah, plays you know, a, a, a Atlanta athletic club, I think. Yep. And is like so comfortable and confident on the hardest grass that they play on. And that's yeah. like uber grainy Bermuda and like, all of her wins, whether they like, you can go back into AJGA to college to like, you know, women's amateur. Have, like, she played on like super tough golf courses. I mean, she's won like the women's north and south and, you know, contested every year at Pinehurst number two. And like, she's won at some really, really hard, difficult golf courses on, on places where your short game should be the worst. And it seems like you put her on like fairer grass courses where she's like has to putt and chip on bent or rye and she's like kind of lost mm -hmm. and it's just like a it's a fascinating thing to watch and kind of see and i hope this just comes with like you know repetition and like more exposure to some of these places but she's got to she's got to square that stuff up or if she you know in order to make the solheim cup team and that's kind of what i like about the overall points list is like it is truly a year of consistency here especially now because we're on the the i don't know what what would you call it a, kind of a drawn back point scale this year just because we just yeah. had another solheim cup last year so yeah. a lot of the dead weight is like dropped off the back and you truly have to like you need to run for the next eight months or else you have no shot of being there yeah i i think that's right i'm fascinated to see how bailey keeps playing i i i'm Truly, you know, if the putting can just be okay, I, I want to see how far the ball striking can take her. I, I'm excited to watch, uh, certainly in the next, you know, several weeks. But as we inch closer to Solheim as well, it'll be fascinating to see, you know, if, if she sticks around and in her place in that conversation. Speaking of Solheim, uh, Albane Valenzuela could be a, a nice addition to the European team as well. Yeah, I, I think we'll talk a lot about Solheim, but I, I think the European team has a lot of interesting decisions. Don't you, TC? I mean, uh, Suzanne so Patterson. So flex right now. It's nuts. <laughs> like, if you want to compare the team that they played with last year to where, like, exactly. where the, that team's at right now, it's it's not even like, yeah, you know, 70% of those people are missing. <laughs> Where's Headwall? We're in you the offseason Where's right Headwall? <laughs> Keep keep headwalls. Headwalls doing doing uh she's doing two a days. Yeah. <laughs> just you know just doing OTAs. Yeah. Yeah. Um uh, well guys, I, I, I want to take a peek about what's ahead on the LPGA schedule, but before we do, um TC, you, you brought up Ayaka Foodaway as as somebody that has, you know, maybe a little under the radar gotten off to a, a wonderful start this year um is there anybody else cody i'll start with you anybody else we can kind of highlight that aside from the obvious right like lydia co has had a phenomenal start to 2024 is there anybody flying a little bit under the radar we can shine some light on through these first uh, you know two plus months well yeah you know my heart here i want to i want to give a quick shout out to to my girl that you guys all dogged me on last year because we had to go back to q school but uh, obviously Lucy Lee. I knew you were going to, I knew you were going to go with Lucy Lee. <laughs> I mean, how, how could I not? I mean, uh, she started the year, so she's made the cut in every tournament that she has, uh, has been eligible to play in so far, which isn't a lot, honestly, because besides like 
you know, the tournament champions to start the season off and then not having the points to qualify for the whole Asian swing that only left like drive on. And that's really it. Like she went over to, to Singapore, played in China just because they were looking for people. It's a tough spot to be in, but it's made every single cut T4 at drive on another, you know, T14 went over to Saudi and played there. And then in China rounded that out with a T10 finish there. But from where we were at last year to where we're at now, phenomenal improvement. I think this just shows like, you know, Lucy's really young. Uh, she needs years of not only like professional golf experience, but like life experience. She's traveling to brand new places, playing, seeing brand new, you know, things and people and trying to adjust to all this. I love where this second season is kind of settling in uh, for her right now. And then the second one is obviously last year, Alexa Pano. You know, one on the ladies' European tour is awesome win in I in uh, Ireland, and then you know just kind of how she she started this year uh, ended up withdrawing from the HSBC in Singapore. But outside of that, has had uh, you know two pretty solid solid starts. Made some she good had a money second going place, over, right? Yeah, made some uh, at Tournament of Champions. That's where she started yeah. the year at, and then you know went over to Ramco Ladies and and made a nice little check there for a t18 finish but I, I i will just jump in you guys i'm on a kpmg insights kick today uh i i do think i, I want to give them credit i've the build out of the kpmg performance insights page that it's getting much better lucy lee where her success has been coming from her her iron play I mean, third, right again, limited sample, right? Not everybody has that many starts, all, all the disclaimers. Um, this, this certainly could change. But right now, Lucy Lee is, is gaining about a shot and a half on her approach play, which by far is the strength of her game. Actually, she's negative in like every other category. So exceptional iron play right now. And then I, I thought the real interesting one is looking at Alexa Pano. I mean, TC maybe self-reporting some awful putting, losing <laughs> over a shot per round just putting. But the rest of her game, you know, T to green has, has been phenomenal. So Alexa maybe is one, if we're to believe the stats, you know, if, if she finds a hot putter, dang, she, she could win, you know, just about any week, it seems like. Yeah, I would say somebody else to, to shout out, uh, Sarah Schmelzel at a – yeah. Very solid finish. Uh, but yeah, it just, it feels like, you know, Minji just getting things kind of started up for the year. She finished, she had a kind of a middling performance at Singapore and then played, played well in China. I think she finished fourth. So it's kind of one of those things. I think it feels a lot like this week coming up, this stretch, we've got three great tournaments in a row. It feels like this is like the Sony, uh, you know, farmers phoenix stretch or the sony farmers pebble stretch on the pga tour when they had the fall season right of like we're coming out of the fall season some of the top guys have played zozo or a wgc or you know cj cup or whatever but now now everybody's getting back together for full field events at you know proper venues and all that so i feel like we're going to find out like i think the next you know three weeks are are extremely uh important just to see kind of like i'm expecting minji to come out firing there at palace verdes you know here this week and then we've got not to take us ahead randy i'm sorry i'm like you're 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 running so far ahead hey real quick one thing on minji i want to shout out so number one the the aussies listening to this i know that there is an awesome i guess like documentary that aired in australia in the states we i haven't been able to find this thing anywhere it's not on youtube or anything else like that but i know the the Australian Golf Digest crew, I think they were the ones that like ran it or produced it or something like that. So shout out to that. But I did find something that Golf Digest in the United States put on their YouTube page. And it's Minji and Min Wu together. And it's like a three-part series, Sp- Spawn Con all over this thing. But uh, it, it's like fascinating because it's literally at their home club in Perth and kind of talks through them growing up, how they got to where they're at, what their like differences as kids and kind of how they've they've moved through their professional lives obviously at a a different speeds with minji being like you know she's been a professional golfer now for 10 years a a major champion and like you know just continues to get better and better and better every year whereas minwoo's just kind of bursting onto the scene now and and being more widely known but 
it was cool to see their interactions and kind of how they are. And, and Minji is still, uh, she's such an introvert, even with her own brother. It, it's, it's fascinating to watch and kind of see and, and see it play out. But I want to uh, shout that out. It's on YouTube for anybody who wants to go see it. It was awesome. Randy, I don't want to get you mea culpa here. Uh, Alexa Panton won in Northern Ireland. Just, just... No, that was me. I said Ireland. Oh, okay. Very good. Just... Good call on that, though. But I, was it the Irish <laughs> Open, at least? No, it was the one at Galgorm Castle. Which uh, tough. Okay. Tough scene there. So. Well, my my bad. Uh, full mea culpa on my part. Northern Ireland, of course. Yeah. Uh, you you uh, know. But so... and, then, and then yeah, I mean Randy, like Lilia Vu, like withdrew what two weeks in a row with back issues as well. Like it's, I feel like it's you know. It's, it's almost a bonus if you played well in Asia because there's a lot yeah. of players not making the trip. There's a lot of players that just going over to knock off some rust. A lot of players came back and are freaking exhausted after coming yeah. back after being over there for close to a month. Uh, you know, so a lot of, a lot of moving parts right now. And it's like, all right, let's, let's really get the season started now. Yeah. Uh, I think you that... travel, you think you could travel with a sleep number? on the Asian swing, like what, bad back. I, I mean, that's a mattress issue, man. Cause you got physios, you got everybody else, unless there's something pulled or tweaked somewhere along the line, you got, you, you got to get these people. And I know that there's a proud mattress sponsor mm -hmm. of the LPGA tour. I'm shocked. Their number one player had to withdraw back to back weeks. You got to fix that. Yeah. She's got to take a page out of uh Louis playbook and, and start traveling with that mattress you know tc just to keep canada off my back you know, kid canada yeah. loves to come Brooke's at playing me nice right now brooke is playing nice uh some some really good results three top tens and four starts i i, I think you know certainly something to keep an eye on there That's was big of you randy <laughs> thank you thank you uh megan kang is is hitting the shit out of the golf ball uh, yeah. right now. Let's let's flip it on to the other side. We, are, are, is there anybody that's um, not <laughs> not playing well? I, I think I'll, I, I'll start us off. One that I kind of identified, Jennifer Cupcho, just not not doing a not doing a whole lot. Off to a tough start this year, struggling with with her iron play. She's somebody that just continues to confound me a little bit. Uh, she 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 has one, you know. Listen, she she certainly two, won brother. a major, but yeah, <laughs> just, malcontent. I, I just keep waiting for a. a she didn't have a good year last year either. No, she didn't. She had a she had a second up at up in New Jersey at the, at, at Liberty National. I think otherwise she had what one top ten. Other than that, a lot yeah. of made cuts, but just a lot of middling performances. So. Yeah. Cody, who's somebody that you, you're kind of keeping your eye on that that hasn't really played well to start the season? Well, real quick, do you think uh, you think Jennifer Cupcho's husband Jay Monahan's just like kind of been inundated <laughs> with like requests and everything else? Maybe it's just they've been super busy in their household. People inviting him to fly out to the Bahamas for secret <laughs> meetings and stuff like that. I uh, think I all dude, you know he gets just absolutely lit up on social. <laughs> <laughs> spammed all the time uh i big you put her on it's the list truly a I, situation uh from office space why <laughs> why should i be the one to change my name he's the one who sucks yes. uh big you put her on the list but I, i'll i'll get ahead of it and point this one out pretty disappointing start so far i would say from what our kind of community expectations were for my start now having said that she's she's made every cut but it's just she's just kind of there I don't not many know. cuts. I, I want to save some flack for you, Cody. None, none of these Asian, they, they, there are no cuts. Well, even <laughs> even before that, you know, she played drive on, obviously True. a cut at okay. drive on. Tournament champions, you know, I, I understand. She only played two of the uh, Asian events, Thailand and then Singapore. But, you know, I know she was up the road. She spent a couple weeks uh, here up in, in Dallas. I don't know why she's practicing at, at the Nelson Sporting Club and bouncing between there and Las Colinas. But, She's putting in the work, man. She's grinding. But on the flip side of that, I also know that she spent like the majority of her off season back in Sweden grinding and like hitting in a simulator and out of like a covered porch out into like three feet of snow. So it's going to take a little bit to knock off these cobwebs. But that's why I'm excited for the LPGA Tour to finally get back, you know, have somewhat of not just consistent schedule, but like travel for the players because it takes so much, you know, out of them bouncing around as much as they have. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I'll even throw in her her compatriot or countrywoman, Lynn Grant. Um, you know, not a, not an awful start to the year. I I, I don't want to make it worse than it is, but she's played four events, no top tens. Just just a slow start for her a little bit. Um, her best result was her most recent in Singapore, which hopefully will portend to better play ahead. But yeah, just just a sluggish start for for our friends from Sweden. TC, I, I will I don't, say I don't want that on you. But. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. You know, I, I think Lynn, Lynn, Lynn needs to start getting on her horse a little bit. The ladies European tour, I, I don't want to diminish the European Solheim Cup team too much because you've got uh, Esther Henselet played well in, uh, she's German. She played well in Saudi Arabia. Emily Christine Pedersen's you know, playing nice all over the world right now. Yeah. Uh, Charlie had a good good showing there and then we had the the ladies magical kenya open as well we had a few few decent performances there on the european side and then bronte bronte won in, in um, morocco so the ladies version of the trophy hassan too bronte would be you know i love love her fiery personality she she'd be a fun addition you know if she if she were to make yes. the solheim cup team for sure could be like if, if headwall doesn't make it like bronte could be like hey you know what like i'm the glue person i'm the yeah you know i'm a good locker room person i'm gonna bring the energy the ladies european tour they have their own podcast and they usually try to get like most recent winners on stuff like that they had bronte on there and it was such a fascinating discussion because they asked her kind of like you know what happened where have you been and she talked about how much confidence she had like after the the toledo solheim cup Mm -hmm. and like how she was on like cloud nine and everything and then like basically she f she somehow convinced herself that she was like the worst putter in the world <laughs> and like took her all the way to rock bottom and like played horrible for really like you know an 18 two-year stretch and finally building everything back and putting pieces back in place and uh you know finally seeing her back in the winter so and kind of that full circle evolution of of her being like well, I didn't like change anything. Like I didn't change my putting stroke. I didn't change anything of how I do it. It was like strictly just mental and how you can go from like the highest highs to the lowest lows uh, just because of, of something that randomly pops into your head one day. It's, it was crazy to see. Randy, I'll shout out Pauline Rusin Bouchard and Fatty Kano as well for their couple other Europeans playing nice. I, I think we're missing. I think we're may, maybe missing a, a legit Solheim contender is uh, Alexandra For Firsterling. Yes, a, another she won German. As well, right? She just yeah. won the the Ramco Team Series event, beat Charlie Hall by three strokes, and she won twice on the LET, kind of in the in the fall season last year. She won in Mallorca in November, and before that in Switzerland in September. She is an LPGA rookie, so she's somebody we're gonna see getting starts on, on the LPGA uh, calendar here as the fields expand. So uh, another one to keep an eye on. I get so many emails about the Aramco team series. Like it's, <laughs> Dog. it's crazy. It's In lot. what way? I'm, I'm not on that email list. Oh, it just I get emails if they want me to come out and be like, uh, you know, a, a paid, paid, come hype the event. But there's also a ton of press releases that come with yeah with them i will say this is that so i'm still confused and i haven't really heard any new updates or anything on the whole lpga let merger not merger they're already merged but we need to figure out a pathway forward situation but i always know that like okay there's like a mutual understanding and the lpga currently is underpinning like the vast majority of let purses that are not a ramco series purses but don't you think just like back in the day of like the PGA tour and the European tour that there's like this sort of like, you know, handshake agreement. And it feels like the more and more and more like ladies European tour events come and are played on us soil that are not at least some way co-sanctioned events. Like it just continues to like kind of not make any sense to me during that same week, the Ramco series event is in Tampa and like, the LPGA tour is like bouncing between China and Singapore. I'm like, where, where, what are no, we I was going to say, here? not only is it not, you know, is it 
is it in the States? It's the same week as an LPGA tour event and sucking certain players off from the LPGA tour field as well. Which, and like, those meanwhile, same players went over and yeah. played in like Saudi. So like, what, what, what's the status of like the, the re- conflicting event releases? Did they have, did they not have to use one of those releases they... for Saudi because there wasn't an LPGA tour week? Did they have to yeah. use one here? Like what's All the I deal? Get, it's crazy too. Like, I don't like, I can't even find a, they have a gross and a net team scoreboard on the on the website, I I, so, but I can't even that, find yeah. like the the individual <laughs> results from that. Of like like my big thing is like it just seems like the ladies European tour is like exceptionally poorly run, like like wildly wildly amateurish. I don't know. I, I, I'm just looking from like TC. I'll agree with you from the surface and saying that from what we have seen from the events that we follow most of the time, which usually are the Ramco events that are held in the States, in addition to the big European tour events that are usually in mainland Europe that we'll, we'll follow and the Solheim Cup. Like, still, the Solheim Cup was a, was a complete shit show. Oh, it's a um, disgrace. And I know Off a lot court. of that. Just for and, people wondering, this is like the the logistics, the organization, right. all of that stuff. Yeah. But I know that a lot of that falls on like, it, it just seems that, that the European tour, kind of what got us so fired up when we were in Korea, is that I think there just is, there must be a ton of like, I don't want to say corruption, but I think there's just a ton of backdoor dealings of handshake agreements of like, oh yeah, you know, Costa de Sol is this for this big splash of money and they get this slew of things and oh yes so we're gonna pin this over here and it just seems like everything is so disorganized and kind of like aloof that nobody is really there to be like yo this is the tour and like this is the the steady state product because even within their own tour they have a separate tour the Aramco team series well and I mean shit though you know ladies European tour points was called the race to the coast of del sol yeah you sell it man. last That's year and they and, and well no longer it's just called the order it's just the order of merit now they they pulled out as soon as they got oh, that so long cup. yeah which and just hey, canceled the rest the way, of that contract we we spotlighted pay. last year yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so like just to tie a bow on that that happened yes and you know yeah i guess cody to your point kind of the the broader point is i uh, it it remains to be seen whether, as I believe, the PIF is going to start exerting more influence through the LET, whether the dealings with the LPGA Tour, whether, whether they're coming together and working as partners for you know, uh, something that works best for both of them, or if they're going to start working against each other that's what i can't quite figure out at this time is are 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 we like in this together and and working towards a mutual agreement or are we like butting heads and i guess you know time will tell but i i don't have a great update on like the internal affairs of that right now i guess one other player running in has played all five events no top tens. In fact, she's only got four rounds in the sixties. Uh, I'm certainly not ready to hit the panic button, but just some real mediocre golf from her. So something to keep an eye on as we go forward, gentlemen. We've we've mentioned uh, defending the, champion defending this, this week. week Come right? on, yeah. Let's let her... give her a break. <laughs> what? She had to go. She had to go back home to China. You know how many you know responsibilities and everything she probably had going on. A new major champion returning oh, home. She, she could still play some better golf. <laughs> Fresher this year because it's an Olympic year. You know how much that means to China. I mean, I'm looking at her to be one of the best players in the world. Come on, a couple yeah, more rounds in the '60s for the for the Olympics. Well, right? of course, but she, you know, she got she had to go home see coach. You got Shen Shen over there getting her all fired up about shit. <laughs> All right, so this week is the uh, the Palace Verdes event. I, I think the interesting thing to note, it's been relabeled the Say Repak Championship, which I love. I, I, I really like some of these former players and certainly Say Repak, her influence on not only women's golf, but Asian golf and global golf is, I, I won't say unparalleled, but it is massive. Um, 
I, I'm, I'm glad to see her kind of owning one of these events. Of course, you have the, the Annika late in the year in Florida. I, I think it's wonderful how some of these, these luminaries from days past are, are still involved in, in taking over championships. I, th I think that's good for branding. I, I, I think it's good for you know some of these week-to-week -week events on tour. Palace Verde's really an up and down course, truly uh, up down a lot of little weird holes. Um, when the winds up, it, it can be fairly tricky. Excited to watch this week. You guys said running in defending champ, anything else you want to add as far as this week or, or should we look ahead the next couple weeks also? I just think Sayri Pak like criminally underrated probably from a career perspective, right? Both on the, you know, I, I mean, I know she's got what, like four majors, I think. Um, you know, so certainly gets compared to an Annika or a Lorena Cho or whatever, but I don't know. I just think from a cultural standpoint, like she's every bit the equal of Annika as far as what she did for professional golf in Korea, not just men's or women's, just golf in general. I would say not just Korea, but all of Asia. Uh, I watched her press conference yesterday and kind of, that was the one thing is that everybody, you know, kind of kept going back to like, yo, yeah, the 1998 you know, major win and kind of what set, you know, the stage for this huge golf boom in South Korea. And she she made a point two or three times to correct them and, and say, no, not just South Korea, but all of Asia. It's something that she's very proud of and, and rightfully so. Um, I didn't realize that her foundation basically is like underpinning the majority of development in South Korea for all both men and, and women's, you know, hmm. junior golfers that are coming up. Uh, to include like, you know, not just access to to tournaments and practice facilities, but like helping with, uh, you know, cost of monies for food, for lodging, for everything prior to them getting into like the National Acad Academy, which I thought was like, yeah, that's really, that's really cool. Something that you, you probably don't have to do. Uh, she could have went back home to South Korea and just kind of continued on with her life. And she decided not to and, and completely reinvest herself and make her mission like developing the next generation of champions. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Totally agree. It's kind of weird. She never, she never lost an LPGA playoff. Six How many was she in? Six and oh. <laughs> yeah. Cool stat. <laughs> I like stats like that. Big, how many uh, total events do you think she won on the LPGA tour Co to include majors? Ooh, great question. I have no idea. So this is a pure guess. I will say, including majors, 18? 25. Dang. 25 wins in 12 years. It's pretty strong. How many, who do you think is the second on that list for uh, Koreans with the most LPGA Tour wins? Is it MB? I would guess. Mm -hmm. MB with 21. And then there she is, Jin Young, climbing up that list with 15 yeah. now. Yeah. I want to see something from Jin Young on this this West Coast swing here. I do too. She's got to be happy about being on the West Coast. Got that good food. <laughs> food. <laughs> she talks about the, you know, the weather that's more, <laughs> uh, you know, agreeable to her. She might be a dome golfer. Mm, that's interesting. Uh, after Palos Verdes, new event, guys. The Ford Championship, uh, Seville Golf and Country Club. This is the greater Phoenix area. I've, I have no idea exactly where Seville. South Phoenix. Okay. Cody, it's, yeah, it's, you, it's real, you've real been there south. Before, right? I have. So in, in college, I used to, uh, for like one of our classes, I had to teach a junior academy at Seville Country Club. And it, it's so far south. It's like south of Chandler, uh, down by. Is that uh, more like Canada. Tucson? Is Tucson south? My my Arizona no, geography it's, it's sucks. South. Yeah, okay. this one's like an hour and a half south. Big, come on. I, well, but yeah, this is still like considered in in the greater Phoenix metroplex, but it's like on the very very southeast corner of that. Where when when I was there, this is a long time ago, twenty years ago now. Seville was literally just out there with like farmland and and you know Arizona cowboys and everything like that. It was it was truly a wild west place. But it's a, a great little, you know, private club. I'm sure it's going to – I know they're excited about hosting this because this event 
uh, the Arizona event last year didn't have a title sponsor is just the drive on and and they're up at Superstition Mountain and and they've been trying to find a, a home and I know what really makes these LPGA events kind of click is like finding these clubs that have this awesome membership that kind of you know is excited about it and and can help build some tradition around it and I hope that this is a spot for it. So they so this is a an, this is the inaugural event even though yep. they had the drive on in Arizona last year, this is a totally new, distinct event. Completely new. You got Ford coming in, so of course they're buying up naming rights, everything else like that. Big. We got a, a new charitable component to it. I do you want to tell? I legitimately, I think this is awesome news for for women's golf. Uh, so it was announced that the Thunderbirds, of course, you know the Thunderbirds as the the people that put on the waste management open. TPC Scottsdale. <laughs> been a tough Q1 for the Thunderbirds. It's been a tough Q1. But uh yes, they were announced. They they are officially joining as uh the tournament family as a founding partner. And from the press release, as part of its relationships, the Thunderbirds um have kicked in. They've they've increased the purse up to two point two five million. But but I I just think bigger picture. With the Thunderbirds you know, taking out the shit show that was this year's uh, PGA Tour I feel like event. the ladies kind of need that a shit show like that. I, that's like, exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. The, the Thunderbirds party, know how to throw a party, and they know how to make an event a big deal. And I think, again, the more that the LPGA Tour can do that for these non-major events is a wonderful step. And yeah. hopefully someday this turns into, you know, I... I I don't know if it's ever going to be as big as what the waste management is, but if it can be like a fun party in the desert celebrating women's golf, like that's a massive win. So I, I was really excited to see the Thunderbirds come on. I, I will say too, as, as part of that announcement, uh, anybody, if you're in the Phoenix area, the, the greater Phoenix area, the Wednesday I know you love Phoenix, Randy, I know the Wednesday of the event, I believe that's going to be March 27th is a, a free day. So I, I believe you still have to like get a ticket online, but they're free. It's a great chance. Go out, see the course, get up close with some of the best, you know, female golfers in the world, bring a kid, bring a friend. I, I think, you know, that that's a wonderful thing they're doing. So I wanted to shout that out. If you happen to be in the area, uh, the week of the event. And then the the third event in this little three week run is the match play at Shadow Creek. I, I think big picture, it's awesome that they've moved this up in the calendar. I thought it, where it had been early May, it just wasn't in a great spot, especially when it was the week before the U.S. Open. So this gets moved up. I think Shadow Creek is a fantastic match play golf course. Um, this was all. This was among the best viewing of the year last year yep. men's or women's uh are, are they doing tickets to the tournament this year i don't think they have so. spectators or no no I, I mean nothing that i've heard i i think as in years past like it's super exclusive you have to be staying at the at the resort um but hopefully maybe I'm that's an insurance that. thing or something but yeah it's i mean it's <laughs> no. wednesday to sunday you know got a new title sponsor too and t-mobile t-mobile yeah so Yep. Uh, Padgery Ananarukarn. I, I, that was slow, but I think I nailed that pronunciation. She is your defending champ. It was an awesome event last year. And so we it have was an these... awesome event last year, but I feel like we were a little bit disappointed with like the final eight was so sick. And then it was like, like everything broke the way of like, oh man, like <laughs> the wrong people kept advancing as far as from a fan interest perspective. Yeah, nothing against Padre, but yeah. both Leona and Lynn were in the semis in a, in a Leona McGuire, Lynn Grant final would have been epic. Uh, we were, we were robbed of that. I believe both lost their semifinal matches, but say la vie. I wanted to mention it's, it's three, three events. And then the LPGA tour takes a week off during the masters and then we'll come back with the first major of the year, the Chevron. So um, as, as we've said all show, great run of LPGA coming up. And then the only other thing to throw in there as far as, you know, big deal in, in amateur golf is the Anwa. Of course, that will be taking place April 3rd and 4th from Champions Retreat. And then April 6th, the final round is a Saturday from Augusta National. We're going to have... 
some content around that. Let's say we're, we'll we'll have a preview show. We're gonna have a couple people on site. TC, you're gonna be up there. I know um, I you've said it's one of the best ways to just be at Augusta to see Augusta. So much more on that. But that's I'm stoked. Yeah, I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna do my. I'm gonna go to Anwa on Saturday, do the pod Sunday, and then uh, probably Monday I'm gonna do my my, my Waffle House visit. Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah. So, so if you drop if you in want a schedule, yeah. you know, if you, if you want some FaceTime with TC and you're in the area, I'll, uh, you know, I'll be hanging out at a local Waffle House likely. So, uh, perfect. You know, more to come there. It's cool too. I think the, between the, the, you know, LPGA match play out at Shadow Creek and Anwa going on that same week, it should be a really, really good week for women's golf at large, especially now that Chevron and Anwa don't conflict and go up against one another yeah one last thing on match play while we're there too i just want to shout out new format for this year you guys know really oh Oh, no i i this did not click for me what is it so it's uh it's 96 players this year but it's three days of stroke play and then the pods then down to a match play bracket what are they cutting down to so uh 96 players will compete in stroke play competition from wednesday to friday so i bet they go to 32 then with a cut to 65 players and ties after 36 holes the third okay. round after the third round the top eight players advance to weekend's match play oh i kind of dig you know i've been asking for a format like that f- for some of these match play events i'm i'm glad that they're gonna I'm so they're glad going that they're gonna like, do it. so three rounds of stroke play and then they'll just cut down to basically quarterfinals yeah and then do yeah and then and then you win three matches and you win god this could this there could are create big numbers awesome out at shadow creek yeah for sure but dude just this is uh this is setting up for some like prime playoffs for these eight spots yeah yeah like because it's going to be super bunch it's kind of like what i've noticed live is going through right now too is because they have so many playoffs in these events there's only 54 holes it's not really enough enough time enough holes to like really separate each other but if you're taking eight i guess the only the only downside would be maybe i wish they would have maybe gone to 16 I was I think just 30, thinking 32 that. probably doesn't whittle it down enough, but 16 would have been a really good middle ground, I think. So you have to win four matches to win the thing. But maybe that's a lot after three rounds of stroke play anyway, you know? So three rounds of stroke play into what will be a Saturday, which will be a 36 hole day. Like so that's a lot of golf. They'll play the quarters and the semis on Saturday and just the finals on Sunday. It just it, right now it's laid out. It says we'll advance to weekend match play uh, yeah. competition that concludes Sunday with the championship match. Okay. No, I that like that par three seventeenth at Shadow Creek has been legitimately. There might be some really high numbers in stroke play, which I think will be super interesting. I, I'm actually fascinated to watch them play Shadow Creek as a as a stroke play course, just for how difficult. I felt like it's played at times during match play. Oh no. I just, yes. I got to the bottom of the release. The players challenge a nine hole celebrity match featuring national football league stars will return for its second year and will be played Sunday, April 7th prior to the championship match. Listen, that's fine. That's fine. As long as you're showing most of the, you know, just show me the shots from the championship match. I don't care if we cut to the, to the celebrities. <laughs> Guys, the lawn guys are here. I'm just going to warn you. I got the guy with the backpack blower out the garage door. I will say Friday night, that could be some really, really good like prime time yeah. Yeah. viewing with yeah. playoffs. Like you said, so, uh, Cody, like that's that's like provocative stuff, I think. Well, good on Randy, them for, before, before good on we them get for out trying a new format. I, 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 yeah. I, I, I dig, you know, I dig freshening it up and trying new things. Yeah, Why a couple news. Why can't we do that like the the freaking tour championship on the pga tour like like if sponsors are so spooked about having just match play just have a have a stroke play lead in you get all three you know you get three rounds yeah i know i know cody you got some news and notes and then we'll get out of here yeah one last thing too is that uh t-mobile that that purse has gone up by quite a bit uh so more money in there for the match play tournament i think it's awesome change of format 
Uh, I think their uh, LPJ tour is going to announce like next week, another purse that's gone up too. I think they're almost up to like $120 million that they're competing for total for the year. Pretty good stuff. The other thing, this is coming across the wire from, of course, Doug Ferguson of the AP, the Olympics 2028. We know that this year, the format is set. You can't change anything about Paris, but 2028, the Olympic committee is uh, close to making an official announcement that's going to add a potential mixed team event, uh, which is going to be awesome because, of course, that's in L.A. Um, excited to see what that is, how you qualify for that. They say right now, I guess a couple sources said that information should be put out prior to the Masters, which mm. seems pretty quick. Like this yeah. is coming down right away. But the way that it works now is that at the Olympics, the men play there tournament normal stroke play and then they're gone and then the women play like the following week or whatever it is i guess they're going to move kind of separate those by uh move them a day for 2028 and then those middle three days will be this supposed mix thing but who knows how that's going to work out how qualifying how the teams all this stuff is going to play but the good thing is that this isn't coming necessarily out of thin air they already do this for the Summer Youth Olympics, which I did not know about, all right? So it's been used for the Summer Youth Olympics since 2014. The last competition, Ataya Titicol was part of the Thai team that won the gold medal over Akshay Batia and Lucy Lee of the United States. I think this is pretty cool. Uh, this is obviously coming off the, the Grant Thornton that, you know, Kind of mixed reviews, obviously not the the best numbers or or really the, the best field unless you're a Grant Thornton ambassador, but trying to throw more mixed events in there, I think it would be uh, awesome. And if you can solidify it with a you know an Olympic medal, that's pretty yeah. damn cool in my book. Got but, Team Rose and, and Charlie Hall <laughs> teaming up together. <laughs> well, when you guys were talking about Minji and uh, Min Wu, I mean, how, how crazy would it be to have brother-sister <laughs> yeah. team representing Australia? I, I think that could be could be combustible. <laughs> it could be combustible too. I know it'll be interesting. Uh, you have Lexi and Curtis Thompson representing the United States. <laughs> Any yeah. of the Thompsons. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought that was what was missing though from Grant. You know, Olympics obviously playing for a medal. There's there's real genuine stakes there. I I, I think putting the Grant Thornton in December when it's just golf silly season. It, it just. I don't know. It just can't help but feel like an exhibition. And so I, I, I think that drug it down a little bit. But um, I, I think that's fabulous news. I, I look yeah. forward to, you know, at more Riv details too. being released. Yeah. That's right. At Riv. Shit. Yep. The only drawback is is how do you set up the course? Right. Because I think they're, they've had those issues with the Australian Open of when they do the concurrent yeah. thing of how do you, you know, course setup is, is challenging, especially at some of these old school tracks with very very sloped greens and, and you know how do you how do you Does do it, it so that the ladies can can access the whole locations and the greens aren't crazy firm that they can accept a, a little bit you know longer iron or hybrid mm -hmm. or fairway wood in i want to say that riv already hosts a college event i think tiger has a college event that both men and women play at Maybe not. I, I don't know for sure. Uh, the last thing I wanted to get through, just a, some quick Epson tour notes, just because TC is going to be out on the streets this week. Uh, I didn't I didn't realize this like wasn't the case, uh, but a quick shout out. Good on Callaway for stepping up. They, they have announced a new partnership with the Epson tour. They're basically going to provide balls, gloves uh, to players who are not otherwise sponsored. But even if you are sponsored by another manufacturer, they're going to make this stuff available. I guess uh, the Jody Brothers, who we've talked to a couple times, but COO of the Epson Tour, has said that like when he first got on the on the job, that he had players showing up at events and they were going into like the pro shop and and basically just like buying balls and gloves and, and tees like with their own money. And he's like, kind of like, hey, like what are you what are you doing? Like don't don't you have this stuff like didn't you come here with balls and everything? They're like, no, it doesn't matter if I come here or not. Like, I still have to pay for them. So <laughs> he's been trying to figure out a way to get just get the basic necessities for these, these players out there. It's crazy to think. We just talked about $120 million that the LPGA Tour 
is playing for. And Epson is still down there, like kind of just scratching away for chump change. So good on Callaway for stepping up and doing that. The other thing on the Epson is that Dow introduced uh, what they're calling the next generation program. And what they're doing is that I don't know the actual monies behind it, but they've, they've selected four Epson tour players that they're sponsoring for the year. And, and again, I don't know if this includes like everything for them, but the, it, it is a financial investment that Dow's making in these players. And the reason why it came up on my radar is that uh, young hitter, Lakar Biabi, she was selected as one of them too. She's joining uh, Alyssa Abdel Ghani, uh, Anita Udaway, and LPGA Tour rookie, Gerline Coor. Um, I think it's awesome. Just more companies putting money out there of like putting it in people's hands who actually need it and can use it and benefit uh, from this instead of just splashing it randomly across like this massive pool. So excited about that. Cheers to Dow for uh, doing it. And we'll see and, and follow them as they continue along the year. Amen. Thank you. Um, thanks for, for highlighting those and, and pointing those out. Boys, that's a wrap. Hope everybody enjoys yeah. the Palace Verdes event this week. Catch that on Golf Channel. And we will be back with a, uh, a specific, you know, LPGA women's golf check-in the week of ANWA and match play. So be sure to, to find that. But, of course, we'll be talking results on Sunday nights and whatnot, doing our usual thing. So, gentlemen, have a great day. TC, have fun out at Atlantic Beach this weekend. And Thank uh, you. We got yeah. Saki Baba in the field, Randy. Oh, no. Saki awesome. Baba, Annie Park, Amelia Garvey, Emma Talley, Sue O, like some some real players. So that's good stuff. To it. Yeah. All hey, right. I hate seeing Annie Park there. As cool as that is, what are <laughs> exactly. we doing? Uh, this it's like going good. to a corn fairy tour event and like you know, you see Harry Higgs there. Yeah. <laughs> you see Strever like, there. I'm like, uh, man, God, I hate that. <laughs> Let us know what type of putter stuff. she's using. Okay, well. Sheesh. All right. Well, thank you to everybody for listening, and uh, we will see you next time. Cheers.